welcome to another video from explainingcomputers.com. This time we're going to boot up some of the best online retro emulators. These allow us to run early versions of Microsoft Windows, to delve into old editions of Mac OS, and even to resurrect some of the first home microcomputers. Links to everything we look at will of course be down in the video description. So let's go and get retro. Right, I thought we'd start here on PCJS Machines, which as it says uses JavaScript to recreate the IBM PC experience. And the range of emulators available on this site is extraordinary. They can consume many happy days of your life, as you can run things like Space Invaders from 1978, the VisiCalc spreadsheet from 1981, a CPM86 machine from 1983, like I remember from school, and our old friends Windows 3.1 and Windows 95. However, my favourite emulator here has to be this, Microsoft Windows 1.0 Premier Edition, which was a 1985 pre-release of the very first version of Windows, which was Windows 1.01. So let's full screen our browser and run up this emulator. Very exciting, here it is, Microsoft Windows Premier Edition. And uh, here we are on the first ever Windows desktop where the window that's opened is called MS-DOS Executive, which was a kind of very early shell and file manager. You can see we've got different drives here, and we can see what's available on these particular drives. But we'll go back to the C drive, which is actually Windows itself. We can run up a program, for example, here's the calculator. Good to know Windows had a calculator right from the start. Oh, very colorful. We can do a calculation, for example, nine times six, What's the answer? There we are, strange use of a decimal point, but it works, and we can close it down presumably. We could look at about as well, let's look at about. Here we are, Microsoft Windows Calculator, Premier Edition, 1985. But I think we've had enough of that so far, so we'll close that down like that. And it's closed down MS-DOS Executive, but we can open the window again. There we are. What else can we run? Or we can run Notepad, let's run Notepad. That was there right from the start, here it is, and we can uh, type hello and things like this is notepad. There we are, it all seems to work okay. Although the window controls here are not that impressive, everything works from the top left. We go up here, we can select the controls like that. We can, for example, iconify this by selecting icon. It'll go down the bottom there. It's still running, we can bring it up later. But let's run something alongside it. Let's go back into MS-DOS Executive and, for example, run up Paint. There we go. Paint was here at the start as well, back in 1985. Oh, there we are. Very exciting. We can presumably do a bit of scrolling like that. We can, and presumably we can do some filling in as well. Let's do a little bit of that. Oh, it works in a very exciting fashion. And if we want to be really wild, we can bring up Notepad at the same time. We can go down here and do that. And things get split on the screen. You would not got much choice how they got split on the screen. It doesn't work particularly well like that, does it, where the paint's got a bit of a problem there. But we can zoom paint full screen if we want to do. We can go up here and we can go to a zoom like that. And oh, look, paint is full screen. I do find it fascinating to be running these very, very old programs, this very, very first version of Windows. And when you think how much Windows affects our lives today, it's fascinating to see the very first, the Premier Edition. Next, I thought we'd take a look at one of the fantastic online Mac emulators created by Mihai Parparita as part of his Infinite Mac project. As he notes, he's built on the work of James Friend, and the specific emulator we're going to look at is for Mac OS 8, which we find here at macOS8.app. So let's full screen to get the full effect, and if I refresh the page, we can even see the Mac booting up. Isn't that marvellous? This really is a fantastic emulation. And I think I'll just nip into the top right here and get rid of the stickies, just to hide others like that. There we are, have a nice 
clear screen. And let's just check exactly what we're running. Let's go up here and do an about this computer. And yes, we can see this is Mac OS 8.1, which came out in 1997. And as part of this emulation, there's lots of software we can check out if we wish. This really is very, very well presented. Under productivity, we've got things like Claris Works, the office suite I've not thought about for years and years and years. But even more exciting here is what's available under graphics. There are things like Mac Paint. There is the Bryce Landscape Generator, which is fantastic to play with if you've got lots of time. But here what we're going to look at is Adobe Photoshop. Photoshop 3.0.5 to be exact. The first version of Photoshop I ever used was version 5, so this is before I use Photoshop. I love running up all this old software. So let's just give ourselves a document to work on, like that. That seems to be OK. And we'll just do a quick little bit of a something or other. Let's pick up some blue and maybe a little airbrush thing. And we'll just do a thing on the screen like that, a nice sort of circle. Let's turn it into a little face, give it an eye and an eyebrow, another eyebrow, smiley mouth. What about the second eye, you cry? Well, let's do that on another layer like that. We'll add a layer like that. We can put the second eye over there. And that means if we turn the layer on and off, we can make our character wink. Isn't it amazing what you can do with both old and new software? But I think for now, I will close this down. We will quit from a Photoshop. Do we want to save? Don't think so. But if you want to check out what it was like to run on older Mac, I would very much recommend macOS 8.app, as well as its sister sites, system7.app and macOS 9.app. In the 1980s, most home computers were not PCs or Macs. Instead, popular machines included the VIC-20, Commodore 64 and Commodore Amiga, the Atari ST, and the Sinclair ZX81 and ZX Spectrum. Online emulators were available for all of these machines, including this one for the VIC-20 by Matt Dawson. Let's just click on the screen, bring it up, and do something exciting like a print, I don't know, 56 plus 98. It works, the power of computing. There we go. And we also have here an emulator for the Commodore 64. If we just go down here and click on online, it'll bring it up. Here we are, very exciting. Let's uh, full screen this as well. Let's do another calculation. Print, I don't know, 34. Shall we do something exciting? Times 789. Oh, there's a calculation, and it's got it correct. It's always good when things are correct. And here we can also load in some games, or at least we can load in a test game called Laser Zone, like that. So we'll uh, try that. This looks exciting as well. Oh, look at this. Full screen that. Press fire to play. And uh, here we go. Oh, yes, I've got control. I can move back and forth. I can fire, and oh, I hit something. That was amazing, wasn't it? Can we hit another one? No, 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 a little skull thing there. Oh dear, I'm not doing very well here, am I? But never mind, let's move on to another emulator, and specifically this one for the Atari ST. And this is from James Friend, the emulator writer we mentioned in the last segment of the video. So let's again full screen to see things with greatest effect. And what we're running here is TOS, or the operating system, which was released with the first Atari ST model, the ST520, in 1985. And if we look here under Desktop Info, we can see we're running GEM, the Graphics Environment Manager, as our desktop. And in many respects, this was better than Windows 1.0, which was also launched in the same year. Not least here, we've got better control of Windows. If I open a window up like that, we've got controls to, for example, maximize at the top which work nice and straightforwardly. And we can also go down to the bottom corner and click and resize a window. And also here, windows can overlap. If I open a second window, they're overlapping like that. That might not seem an amazing thing, but you couldn't do that in Windows 1.0. And back in the late 1980s, I was a big user of the Atari ST. And so using this here today, running this emulator, brings back all kinds of memories 
got very fond memories of the Atari ST, although I did eventually migrate to a Commodore Amiga, and I do intend at some point to make a dedicated Amiga retro computing video. But for now, we're going to move on to my two favourite online retro emulators. Greetings! Here we now are on zx81stuff.org.uk, a fantastic website about the Sinclair ZX81. This was launched in 1981 and was also known in the United States as the Timex Sinclair 1000, and the ZX81 was the first computer I ever owned and programmed. Anyway, let's click on the emulator. As you can probably guess, there's an emulator here, as we've got it included in this video. And if we scroll down, we just get to a nice screen like that. And I'll just uh, full screen, as we can see. There was a keyboard down here because the ZX81 used a very clever trick to save memory. So, for example, when it stored the command print in BASIC, it didn't store it as five bytes, it stored it as one by having print as a particular code. And therefore, you went to command on this system using particular keys in particular modes. Anyway, let's leave that for a second and just try writing a program. This was a boot to basic computer, so let's just write a simple piece of basic code. 10, 4, I just pressed the F key there to get 4, F equals 1, 2, 10. There we are, first line of code written. 20, we will do a print like that, and I think the quote key is a shift P, I hope it is. There we are. Hello, and end the quotes. And finally, it's just like running this on an old TV years ago. It's fantastic. We'll do a next F. There we are, finish our little loop. And if everything is working, we can do a run. And there we are, a recreation of probably very close to the first program I ever wrote. And if you're interested in the first programs I ever sold, they were written on and for ZX81 and published in Sinclair magazines as I talk about in my dedicated ZX81 video. But for now, the other thing I want to do here using this emulator is not to enter one of my programs, but one of the most classic programs ever written for the ZX81, which was called 3D Monster Maze. So let's load in 3D Monster Maze. This really is very exciting indeed. So it's coming in, there it is. So if we just speed through the pre-roll and press the C key to continue, now it seems we need to wait for about 30 seconds whilst things load in. And here we are playing 3D Monster Maze. I think the seven key is moving us forwards. Oh, he's hunting for us. I'm moving around and uh, I can just look around, I think, like this, move along. This is exciting, isn't it? This, I remember seeing this on someone's computer at school once and uh, it was fascinating. Footsteps approaching. Oh dear, we're going to get eaten. There's the monster. This was stunning back in 1981. Wow, there we are. We're not going to see anything more exciting than that, so I think we'll leave it here. This is a fantastic emulation of the Sinclair ZX81. Now, the first two Sinclair home computers, the ZX80 and the ZX81, were black and white machines. But in 1982, colour came to the world of Sinclair computing in the form of the ZX Spectrum. And here we are on the JS Specky website, the home of the JS Specky 3 ZX Spectrum online emulator. And this has been written by Matt Westcott, as we can see down here, and it's supported on his GitHub pages here. So let's go back to the emulator. Let's again full screen and uh, run it up. There we go, and we'll full screen there as well. Oh, that's fantastic. And I think I'm gonna pick the option for 48 basic, the first ever Spectrum, although there was a 16 kilobyte Spectrum. The 48 was very advanced at the time. Many other Spectrums followed in different guises, but this is as close as we can get in emulation to the original Spectrum, which, like the ZX81, was a boot to basic computer. So once again, let's write a simple piece of basic code. And what this should do is to demonstrate the eight colours we had available on the ZX Spectrum. So if we run this, it'll get very exciting. Oh look, we're computing in colour. This was very exciting back in 1982. 
And if I now press the Enter key, things will go black because that's the last paper color we've set. We've got white ink. Although I'm now going to take us out of this. Let's just uh, take this back, not being full screen, because on a Spectrum you could do things more exciting than this. Not least, there were lots and lots of games available. And here we can do find games and try some out. For example, there was a game called Manic Miner, as I recall. Let's search for that. Here we are. Here's the wonderful world of a uh, Manic Miner. Here it is. Oh, look, I'm leaping up and down in the corner. I'm not quite sure what to do. But anyway, this was Manic Miner. Let's now also have a look at another game, which is this one. This is Match Point from Sinclair Research themselves. Maybe Clive Sinclair wrote this on a Sunday afternoon. He probably didn't. Anyway, this was the advancement of tennis on a home computing device beyond Pong with the bat and the ball and the little dot. You actually saw the players. Very exciting indeed. But finally, I thought we'd take a look at this Enduro Racer, motorcycle racing game, as you can see, I have to hold down the seven key to keep uh, accelerating. It's good, isn't it? We keep going faster and faster and faster. Oh, the speed is building up and I can do little left and right. Oh, he even put his leg down. Look, that's good, isn't it? Isn't it amazing what you can do on an old computer? And uh, speeding along through the trees. And if I hit a tree, oh, I didn't hit a tree. I was going to try and crash. Oh, I've crashed there. I just wanted to show you the, the thrill of a vehicle crash on an old computer. Take that Microsoft Flight Simulator. It's just as exciting here in an old ZX Spectrum game. So there we are. In early 2023, we've looked back to some of the classic operating systems and home microcomputers that helped to build the modern computing age. And talking of building, thanks to everybody who's programmed and made available all of the emulators. But now that's it for another video. If you've enjoyed what you've seen here, please press that like button. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe and I hope to talk to you again very soon.